Hey, what's going on there folks? Earthmaster here. It is June 23rd, 2019, 4.14 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here on the West Coast, here in California. We're, we're having a little bit of earthquake activity off the coast of Northern California uh, today and also uh, yesterday, as well as a pretty good swarm of quakes off of the Oregon coast out there. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and chat a little bit about what's going on out there in the uh, uh, Pacific Ocean and uh, take a look at, uh, well, possibilities of what could be coming here in the near future. Uh, I do want to add up some U.S. faults here. And uh, the map that you're looking at on screen is the USGS map, 7 days, all, uh, magnitude 2.5 and above. Um, I did and I did try the all magnitudes but it just blown out uh, just way too many quakes on the map to uh, be able to look at the fault systems and whatnot uh, of course you got the San Andreas fault system the dark red uh, fault system here indicating a plate boundary between the North American plate uh, over here to the east and the Pacific plate over here to the west uh, Los Angeles of course being in the uh, Pacific part of the plate uh, while San Francisco being in the North American part of the plate and uh, all, all sorts of fun action there uh, with, with the uh, direction of these faults here. Uh, so anyway, the activity that we're seeing just off the coast of Northern California occurred yesterday uh, when a 5.6 struck near the, uh, I guess it's a, we call it the Honeydew Fault. I guess we can zoom in here just a little bit closer. So we can check out exactly which fault systems these occurred on. Um, of course, once again, San Andreas fault system down here to the south. It does extend up here to where they uh, rename it a certain or a different name. Even though this line, this fault system, looks as though it continues for quite some time up here to the north uh, into uh, portions of, well, the Cascadia subduction zone up here with the Juan de Fuca plate in action. Um, but uh, the 5.6 occurred just off of this uh, area here. Let's see here. Cascadia Mega Thrust. That's where that 3.3 uh, took place. Or actually, what was that? 2.6 here. Yeah, that was at 2.6 there uh, a couple days ago. But the recent quake, that 5.6, let me zoom in here and see if I can see a little bit more detail. Uh, to me it doesn't even look like it's on any type of fault system here. Um, just off of it actually. Uh, which could be a very bad indicator of some pressure building up out here in the mega thrust area uh, known as the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, and it's it's lined up everywhere out here. So um, so yeah, that 5.6, I really can't pinpoint an area where uh, or which fault system that earthquake took place on. I can zoom in a little bit further and you guys can see it's just, there's no indicated fault systems out here. Uh, just kind of up here in the mountains and whatnot. Uh, just, you know, indicating pressure, build up of pressure out here between these uh, these plate systems out here. The most recent quake here just happened just, just under an hour ago with this 4.1 uh, popping off here. There has been earthquake activity. Don't let this USGS map fool you uh, because I've been watching the live seismograph stations here along the Mendocino coast and uh, there's no doubt there's definitely been quite a bit of aftershock activity uh, in the small and micro quake sized uh, category but for some reason the USGS uh, just does not put it on here. Of course once again this is just a 2.5 and above. Um, I could go all magnitudes when within this area one day all magnitudes and uh, it just they don't update it you know there's just for some reason they don't update it I don't know why uh, maybe it's not important to them but I think it is important to everyone uh, but yeah they're still having uh, earthquake activity out here uh, we'll go back to the uh, last seven days 2.5 and above here and um, bring that back into view um, yeah so this 
4.1 just occurred just under an hour ago not associated with any major fault system or at least not on it um, it is kind of up here in that triple junction the Mendocino fault system with the uh, let's see here we've got the Gorda Escarpment and also the one De Fuca plate up here to the north the uh, subducting part that goes underneath the uh, North American plate that's a theory up here better known as the Cascadia subduction zone um, so there's there's many many fault systems up here folks but it's kind of concentrated right here at least in Northern California today in this little area um, which is very capable of having some large earthquakes here um, too you know aside from the potential of a 9.0 or greater up here in the in the Cascadia mega thrust area uh, I want to focus a little bit of attention up here to the north um, off the Oregon coast here yesterday or yeah well it's been what, a day and a half almost two days now so we're looking at the color code as yellow uh, meaning that it well it hasn't happened recently but within the past couple days I would consider that a pretty recent uh, we did see this warming activity occur before we've seen this 5.6 happen down in Northern California there so uh, you know a lot of a lot of skeptics and, and professional people like to say well you know there's there's no way that can be associated uh, with with the activity in Northern California well it, it does there, there is definitely association whether it's 100 miles 500 miles or a thousand miles uh, earthquakes in specific areas along the fault systems and plate boundaries can play uh, an important role in, in causing or preventing earthquakes in other areas of the same area within, well, you know, like I said, it could be 500,000 miles, 2,000 miles. Uh, so there's no doubt these ultimately are associated with uh, what we've seen down in Northern California yesterday. Um, now, how, you know, it, to me, to me, I'm seeing this as uh, a, not a release of pressure, possibly a release of pressure within this area right here, or uh, it could be actually a buildup of pressure in this region here uh, where these uh, clusters took place which ultimately lead led to more pressure down here towards the south in these weak areas um, so yeah it's just it's uh you know it's it's hard to say what's going to happen next um like I say it's we've seen this before maybe not this exact type of scenario um but you know we got a we got a system here a, a uh a subduction area that hasn't uh, seen a major earthquake in over 300 years last 9.0 or greater earthquake was 300 years ago uh, or actually over 300 years ago 1700 uh, you guys can look it up uh, there's actually a pretty cool uh, description of how they know about it uh, you can go to Wikipedia and check that out I'm not gonna go into full detail here on this video but the potential for a mega quake is it's it's there for us as well you know just because we're in modern times doesn't mean uh, the plates and whatnot stop doing their things uh, it's definitely gonna gonna happen again and uh, unfortunately all these beautiful cities and uh, little towns along the Oregon and Northern California coast are gonna be just pretty much wiped off the map and that's no uh, that's not a joke either it's uh, tsunami is gonna pretty much just take back the land that you know, I guess it once so, uh, getting back, uh, getting back to the earthquakes over here, folks. This little cluster here was pretty much centered out here in the Blanco fracture zone. Okay, you can see this area right here, Juan de Fuca Ridge and whatnot. This is just part of the Juan de Fuca plate up here, that once again subducts underneath the North American plate here, um, and these are kind of spread out over. Uh, looking at the scale here, maybe. 10 miles 10 20 miles or so uh, but these are definitely significant quakes these are not little threes and twos you know there's a the significance of fives and uh, well how many fives we got one two three uh, three fives uh, a handful of fours and uh, a couple threes in there as well but uh, definitely some um, however you want to look at it release of pressure or build up of pressure in this region here uh, it could be either way um, I kind of I kind of lean towards the buildup of pressure just because of the activity that we're still seeing in Northern California today. Um, 
so yeah we're, we're just gonna keep an eye on it I do like I mentioned right here um, let me show you guys the screen here I do have a live data system set up here in Mendocino California Northern California that's a station right here called Mendocino California um, right now there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity an earthquake uh, when that 4.1 struck here just a little bit ago uh, it was a significant signature on the uh, data graph here a large spike which pretty much flatlined the rest of the data coming in uh, and that's how you know if it's a, a of a uh, uh, significant earthquake or not and localized as well um, so yeah it looks like my data froze up there hopefully it doesn't uh, that's kind of weird anyway um forgot what I was gonna say kind of scared me for a second um, if it's a major earthquake, say 7.0 or above, um, you're going to see that signature show up on quite a few stations, including, uh, you know, of course, down in San Andreas system, uh, San Andreas Hollister area, uh, that's going to show up there as well. In fact, it'll show up um, possibly on Japan as well, but after the fact, just a couple, probably just like maybe a minute or two later to show up on that station. Uh, but a significant size earthquake will definitely show up on numerous data stations here. More localized, small to mo moderate earthquake activity will show up um, just only on one or p potentially two graphs here. Uh, but it's kind of important. I like to keep the live data up here um, just, to, uh, just to have it. And uh, I think it's got some value. Put it back to the... Uh, Mendocino station which is right there um, taking a look at one other map here in California that's the uh, well it's this map right here from the Caltech website uh, yesterday they did have two recordable quakes on there following that uh, 5.6 there in um, in Northern California today it looks like they may have taken it down with only one quake registering uh, from that activity yesterday, uh, which is kind of interesting because they did have a 5.6 and then a 5.4 roughly around the same time and at different depths below the surface there. Uh, but let me zoom in here just a tad bit. Yeah, so once again, uh, these folks, so actually they downgraded that 4.1 to a 3.9. Let me bring the screen up so you guys can see here. There's the list of earthquakes right there. 3.9 downgraded from a 4.1. Very interesting there. Uh, data on that 3. Point, or that 5.6 yesterday uh, shows this quake struck at about... Uh, 5.9 miles below the surface, um, which is, uh, I don't know, I guess it's just average for, uh, for quakes. I want to check out the data stations here, what it may have looked like. I wasn't home when that earthquake struck, unfortunately, but uh, definitely did a pretty good signature on the data stations there, at least according to these folks here that monitor it as well. Uh, looks like a pretty well drawn out. Um, so, uh, you know, time will tell. Right now, it's just whenever I see activity like this out here on the West Coast, it's always a uh, good idea to be prepared for uh, uh, any potential movement, further, further larger movement, I should say. I did want to bring up the uh, real-time detection. Well, actually, I don't, actually not the real-time detection system, uh, which is no longer in service, but more or less the... Uh, tremor detection system which is not really real time but it is what it is and I have to use it um, so let's go ahead and bring that up here real quick stand by for just a second wasn't quite ready for uh, to bring that one on but uh, I'll go ahead and do that Okay, so let's go ahead and add uh, what's well, going to be today's date, which uh, for some reason they're not showing anything. Let me check out. Uh, let me go back one day yesterday. 
what's the date today? 20... Hmm, interesting. Okay, so looks like I have to go back at least one day for this activity to uh, pop up here. Uh, but either way, let's see if you guys can see that hopefully. Let me zoom in just a tad bit. I don't want to blow it out. Uh, but this map right here shows you the real-time trimmer uh, along the Cascadia subduction zone here. Uh, these are trimmers, uh, which are not really earthquakes. They're more or less like slow-slip movement uh, being recorded with somewhat of a M energy, somewhat type of magnitude, I guess, is what they're trying to uh, set it at. Um, but there's quite a bit here, including Northern California, uh, Southern Oregon, up around Portland and also just southwest of Olympia as well. So some large scale movement on the uh, Cascadia subduction zone on a, like I said, large scale, stretching a considerable distance here from Northern California up into Northern Washington. Uh, let's see if they got, oh yeah, even up into uh, close to Vancouver Island as well. So it does not surprise me that we're seeing this earthquake activity offshore um, which could be a bad thing because that means that pressure is building out there on the uh, Cascadia subduction zone if you look at it um, as such um, so yeah um, we'll just be on guard folks um, you know I'm, I'm prepared I always make sure I got tons of water uh, a couple you know few gallons of gasoline generator whatnot uh, plenty of canned food soda toilet paper you know all the necessity stuff um, it's pretty important out there especially if you've got some pets and whatnot make sure you got a couple extra bags of dog food uh, it could be you know if a big one hits it could be catastrophic out here for the West Coast uh, and some major cities that you know we could be without power for quite some time so, uh, let's check real quick. Yeah, see 3.9 downgraded right there from that 4.1. Looking globally at earthquake activity, we're seeing a renewed increase in deeper earthquake activity out here in Fiji Islands region. We're just south of that area as well. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me above this fan here because I've been talking for a while. Um, so hopefully the voice is coming through. Uh, nothing major out here in the uh, world of earthquakes. You know, no large major quakes right now. Um, at least within the past couple days. A lot of the activity, renewed activity, is going to be in the white colored rings. Uh, and right now that looks like it's over here towards the west, uh, western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, but also over here to the north and east as well in Northern California. Uh, it's just under that cluster of uh, quakes that we've seen last night there. Um, so, you know, just be prepared, folks. Uh, I'll try to keep you guys updated as much as I can. Um, you know, a lot of times I can't be here next to the computer. Unfortunately, day jobs and night jobs call me because I well have to pay the bills right <laughs> gotta pay the bills and gotta keep food on the table um, so if uh, you happen to be out there around the Eureka Arcata area in Northern California or somewhere in the north northwest corner of the state let me know if you happen to feel it or happen to feel that quake yesterday I'm kind of curious to see what it may have felt like whether it's a jolt or a rolling motion um, according to your perspective, uh, just kind of some valuable information there when it comes to uh, seeing what type of earthquake it may have been. All right, folks, I'm out of here. I gotta get some stuff done here, and uh, we'll chat you guys a little bit later. Stay safe out there.